So here's the product of my second lot of experiments in TIG welding. So these ones over here were just straight lines. I think I might have had a bit of filler in some of them. Here's a butt weld I tried. Um, it's pretty horrific. Um, this one had filler in it, I'm reasonably sure. Um, these ones are just a few fiddling around passes. Uh, this is the first inside corner weld I tried. Um, it's not too horrendous up until about here. I think it started to get really hot. Um, but I was maintaining a relatively consistent movement speed and, and filler feed rod rate. But then it started to get super duper hot around here. So I need to get a better feel for when to back off the power. Um, I also bought the other side of that. Um, which didn't come out too good at all. It's a bit of a disaster really. And also uh, welded Alex into there. Uh, this side I had an angle ground smooth again to do some more testing. So that's not... Not a fair comparison. Um, so this is the second piece I was playing around with. Um, so I tried a, a butt weld with no filler, and so I could focus entirely on just maintaining consistent feed rate, uh, consistent movement speed. And um, I'm not, you're probably just hearing a really annoying clicking sound, but that's me trying to focus. But I think the focus is locked. Um, so that came out really, really good. I'm super impressed with that. Um, the first pass I did, um, I took it off the, off the, out of the clamps and just bent it with my hands and snapped it in half and I had a look and it wasn't penetrating at all. I was just sort of moving around a little puddle on the surface that wasn't actually penetrating. So I pumped up the amps a little bit and went a bit heavier on the pedal. And um, yeah, it came out really, really, really well. Um, well, for me, at least. Um, so that's had no. That's just had a wire brush, scratch it up afterwards, and I went and did the other. I went and passed across the other side as well, and um, yeah, it's much much nicer than my previous attempts. And I did a. I don't know if it's called an overlapping weld or a lap weld. Um, I think that was the first pass I did there, and so I had the clamp here, and so I did that there, which is probably the best I've managed so far. Um, there's a little bit of, it starts to get a bit crazy around here. Actually, no, that's the start of the next one. Um, so then after I got to there, I moved the clamp around and then did the rest of this. So that's why there's a bit of a discontinuity there. But I'm relatively happy with that. I mean, it, it does the job. It's definitely strong. And the last one I did was that one, which I think is not bad either. I'm slowly getting the hang of how to keep things moving at a consistent rate and not get caught up on stuff. Most of it's just sort of body yoga to make sure that your arm can move smoothly over the whole world. Um, some of these ones, I was fiddling around with um, different argon flow rates because my regulator is a CO2 regulator and I'm using it for argon which is apparently fine according to the internet which is never wrong. Um, but um, the flow gauge I don't think is accurate uh, because it's a little ball floating up in a column and if it's being pushed up by molecules of air whacking into the bottom of it argon is going to push it up much further than co2 would so you know one on a co2 scale might be 10 on an argon scale or vice versa i haven't really thought that through too well so i'd sort of uh, i'm concerned that i'm using too much argon i might just bite the bullet and buy an argon regulator they're not too expensive but yeah overall making progress Bye-bye.